Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Welcome into episode one of our team preview series. We're gonna be starting with the AFC South and my highest ranked team in this division coming in at number 11 is the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a really solid team without much star power, but it's really hard to find major weaknesses on their roster. My biggest strength is gonna be quarterback. I think Trevor Lawrence fully broke out over the second half of last season. I have him tied with Justin Herbert at fifth in my quarterback rankings. And I do think at this point, he's right outside of that top three or four tier of elite quarterbacks to take that next step he'll just need to continue to develop his playmaking ability outside of structure like i said this team doesn't have a ton of major weaknesses so i went with wide receiver and cornerback depth calvin ridley zay jones and christian kirk is a solid trio especially considering who they have throwing them the football but if one of those guys gets injured you're looking at tim jones kevin austin jamal agnew i did like parker washington in the sixth round but probably not going to expect him to contribute that much as a rookie and then at cornerback tyson campbell's a stud darius williams is solid Solid, but after that it's low level backups and cornerback becomes a major weak spot if someone gets hurt. The biggest question that I have for the Jaguars is how offensive tackle sorts itself out. Cam Robinson has been a replacement level starter for his entire career and he's serving a suspension to start out the season and they drafted Anton Harrison in the first round who I was a huge fan of. I think he's a top 20 player so ideally you want Harrison to win that job early and never give it up and then on the right side they've got Walker Little who played limited snaps last season. He looked okay but former second round pick not a whole lot of tape to evaluate so he's still a bit of an unknown. My breakout candidate for the Jags is safety Andre Sisco. One of the most athletic safeties in the NFL fell he just needed to get more experience and become more consistent reading the game but he's kind of a throwback player one of the hardest hitting safeties in the league and I'm expecting a lot from him this season an underrated player for the Jags is linebacker Foyasada Luakun he led all linebackers with 45 run stops last season and as an undersized player he's always been more of a coverage specialist but last year he really stepped up his run defense and if they can get one of these second year players to take a next step you're looking at a really good linebacker duo and then sticking with linebacker I think Devin Lloyd is and approve it year. He isn't in jeopardy of getting cut or anything, but his tape last season was not good. He was a liability in coverage. His tackling was inconsistent. So I think he has a ways to go to avoid being another first round linebacker bust. And you've got players like Chad Muma, Ventrell Miller behind him on the depth chart that have talent and would be able to fill in for him if he doesn't pick it up. My second team in the AFC South and my 21st ranked team overall is the Indianapolis Colts. And their biggest strength is the defensive line. They've got DeForest Buckner, who's a top five three technique. Grover Stewart is extremely underrated as a nose tackle. And then they actually have some solid depth with Ada Boware as a developmental piece. You've got Taven Bryan, Eric Johnson they took last year as a freak athlete. So defensive line is pretty clearly the strength of this Colts roster. And for their biggest weakness, I have star power. They've got DeForest Buckner and Jonathan Taylor, but outside of that they don't have a lot of blue chip high-end players and then the biggest question mark for the Colts is offensive line Braden Smith is as good as it gets at right tackle but the other four spots have some uncertainties they've got Will Fries at right guard who's replacement level at best Ryan Kelly's had a great career at center but his last two seasons have been really disappointing and it kind of seems like he's on the downslope of his career Quentin Nelson is an all pro guard at his best but again the last two seasons the play has been very inconsistent he gets beat a lot more often than he used to so he needs to get fully healthy and return his play to 100 percent and then Bernard Raymond at left tackle finished the season well but he started off pretty rough and I had a lot of questions about his pass protection coming out of college so I can imagine a realistic scenario where this is a top 10 offensive line but that's not a sure thing like it used to be with the Colts my breakout candidate is tight end Jelani Woods third round pick last season had 312 yards and three touchdowns as a rookie and with his size and athleticism and ability to high point the football I think he's ready to step in for Mo Ali Cox's tight end one. And then the most underrated player on the Colts is cornerback Isaiah Rogers. I have doubts about this cornerback room as a whole, but I think Isaiah Rogers is a high end cornerback too. So they've got one spot that they should feel pretty good about. And then I actually had two players that I think need to prove it this year, edge rusher Quiddy Pay and Dio Odeyingbo. These are two highly drafted players that haven't necessarily had the production you would expect. Quiddy Pay has been solid, but he needs to take that next step and compete with DeForest Buckner as the number one pass rusher and with Oda Yingbo it's understandable why he hasn't broken out yet he was injured 
injured to start out his rookie season and he was always more of an athletic project. But when you invest a first and a high second round pick on these two edge rushers, you need to be getting more production than they've gotten. And then at 25, we've got the Titans and their biggest strength is also gonna be the defensive line. I think Jeffrey Simmons was on pace to enter the Chris Jones tier of three techniques last season, but he got injured in the middle of the year and was a lot less impactful, especially as a pass rusher. And Jeffrey Simmons at 50% strength was still an average to above average defensive lineman. So I'm excited to see what he does this year. No surprises for the biggest weakness, but you've got to say receiver for the Titans. Traylon Burks will get to, but they need him to take a huge step forward. Kyle Phillips was getting open against everyone that tried to cover him last season, but it's still such a small sample size and he needs to show that he can stay healthy. Nick Westbrook Aquina is a solid backup receiver. He knows where he's supposed to be. He plays special teams, but he just can't get open against man coverage. So he's a player I would be trying to get off the field. Racy McMath has the traits, but he hasn't really shown anything in the NFL or in college. Colton Dow is a seventh round rookie and Chris Moore actually would have been their most productive receiver last year. But this is a pretty underwhelming group and I think it's gonna be the main thing that holds this offense back. And then offensive line is the biggest question for the Titans. NPF is the only returning starter that's playing the same position and his play was all over the place last year. Daniel Brunskill is a nice player because of his positional versatility, but I'm not sure that he was actually great at any position on the offensive line. It feels like we're kind of just penciling him in as a quality starter, but I wasn't that impressed with his tape. They've got Aaron Brewer moving from guard to center, and he had a lot of highlight blocks last season, but so many blown blocks that resulted in negative plays. Peter Skaronski at left guard, you probably feel the best about, but he's still a rookie, and it's not unheard of for a quote-unquote pro-ready player to struggle early on. And then at left tackle, you've got Andre Dillard, who is solid in a limited handful of snaps, and I think he'll be okay, but it's hard for me to project him being a high-quality starter. So one through five, there isn't anyone that I'm sure is going to be good. Chances are one or two of these guys is going to pan out, but it's still hard to project them having a great offensive line next year. My breakout candidate is wide receiver Traylon Burks, and the Titans really need him to become a true wide receiver one. His physicality and athleticism absolutely translated to the NFL. He flashed the ability to high point the ball and dominate people at the catch point, although his hands do need to become more consistent. He had some focus drops down the stretch last year. As long as he's healthy, I feel confident that Traylon Burks will at least be a wide receiver too, but he's got to show that he can win on more than just go routes and contest catches. Third and six, press man coverage against an elite cornerback. Can you shake him at the line of scrimmage and then snap off a quick curl route and get separation? I don't know about that with Traylon Burks. My underrated player is linebacker Monty Rice. It seems like Titans fans have been pretty low on him ever since he got drafted, really, but he's been a really good run defender whenever he's on the field. I think about this play of him juking out Jordan Maialata like every day, and he gave up some plays in pass coverage last season, but I don't actually worry about him as a cover linebacker. Keep in mind, he started over N'Kobe Dean and Quay Walker as Georgia's dime linebacker, and you're not going to play that role for Kirby Smart if you don't have coverage skills and know where you're supposed to be. So just like David Long, I expect Monty Rice to take that next step as a cover linebacker, and I think between him and Al Shire, this is actually a pretty underrated linebacker duo. And then my prove it player is cornerback Christian Fulton. I don't think he has a whole lot to prove on the field, but he needs to show that he can stay healthy for an entire season. When he's healthy, I think he's a low end one, high end two, but if he's only giving you that for 11 games a year, that's not worth keeping on the roster. And if he wants to get a contract extension, at least in Tennessee, him actually being on the field is just as important as his level of play. And then finally, we've got the Houston Texans who come in at 29 on my power rankings and their biggest strength is gonna be offensive tackle. Laramie Tunzel is arguably the best pass protecting left tackle in the NFL. And Titus Howard is really underrated as a pass protector also. And then their biggest weakness by far is linebacker. They've got Christian Harris, Denzel Perryman, Corey Littleton, in. They're really banking on Christian Harris taking a major step forward in year two. And my question mark for the Texans is going to be Derek Stingley Jr. I easily could have put him as a breakout candidate, but if this is going to be a top half of the league defense, I think they really need Derek Stingley Jr. to emerge as a shutdown corner. And I don't think his rookie season was bad enough where you should be panicking, but he was objectively one of the worst rookie corners last season. And for this defense to have much success, I think they're going to have to be led by the secondary. My breakout candidate is running back Damian Pierce. Still don't know how he felt with Kenyon Green is absolutely an approve it year. I thought taking him 15th overall was a reach and that proved to be true. He had a PFF pass blocking grade of 27 last year, which was the fourth worst among NFL offensive linemen, 47 pressures and four sacks allowed. I remember watching defensive linemen last year and if someone played the Texans, they were pretty much guaranteed to have at least one or two dominant reps against Kenyon Green. So you don't need him to be an all pro, but if CJ Stroud's consistently getting pressured up the middle, I don't think he's gonna have a lot of success. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. 
Also, let me know in the comments any NFL draft picks that you'd like me to cover.